everybody. Welcome into Farm Cooking with Nan. Spilt some water on my shirt. I'm going to tell you something. Um, you say, well, Nan, you don't have an apron on today. No, because I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I've got about a half a loaf of sourdough bread that I picked up at the Amish store. I'm going to just take this bread. You can use any kind of bread you want to. I'm doing a little bit of a different experiment uh, on doing a uh, Christmas morning dish that I want to be very good and I want to make sure that I'm getting the ratios right with everything. So I'm just setting my bread out. Now at this point, if you're running out of time and you say, hey, I need to uh, do this real quick, then you could uh, put this on about 150, 170 degrees, put it in your oven and let it dry it out a little bit. I want it dried out a little bit. I'll tell you what else I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and cut it. See, it's already a little stale, but I'm going to go ahead and cut it in four pieces. You can leave it whole. You can cut it in small cubes if you want to, depending on what you're using. I'm going to go ahead and cut these in, in four pieces. Like I said, I'm always looking for just, I mean... When I use a whole loaf, sometimes it's too much and it's not eat. So I'm cutting down my recipe to see if I can make it a little bit lighter. Maybe not as much sugar or not as much. See, you can tell how stale it is. But it's still, I want it to be very, very stale or, you know, dried out. And then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with it. But I needed to do a small one so that I could show you all what I'm going to do on Christmas morning. It's one of the things I use. But I'm cutting it down just for you all. <laughs> Hope you're having a blessed day. And next time you see me, I will have an apron on, I promise, okay? Just going to let the old, just going to let the, the heat in the kitchen sort of dry these out a little bit more we'll see you whenever i'm ready to do the next step as soon as i cut the camera off i thought you know usually i do them in about one inch but this year i want to do a little bit bigger so i'm going to cut them a little bit smaller there's not they don't have to all be uniform, you know, but I think that's just a little bit. Some of these pieces are a little bit too big, you know. Or if you don't want to do that, you can do whole slices. Mm -hmm. Sadie's watching me. She says, I know she's got that bread. Maybe she'll give me a morsel. <laughs> Especially since it's getting close to Christmas. I'm a telling you, I know y'all don't want me to see me cut this up, but I wanted you to see what I'm doing. I'm gonna cut it up smaller. Real quick, I'll show you how small I cut them up. About that size. They're more likely, you know, easier to eat when they're cut up that small. Now let's let it get good and stale. Okay, I'm moving kind of slow tonight because my knee is acting up with this weather and the legs just not wanting to work. So y'all bear with me, okay? Uh, we've got all of our our bread. You can see how tough it is. That's what I want, because I want it to where it will soak up all the goody stuff that I'm gonna put on there. First of all, get this to where you can see it. I'm gonna do five eggs. Let me grab my trash can. It's moving kind of slow, so. <laughs> okay. Two. Three. You know, it's the second time I've done that today. 
don't know about me. Four. Five. Let me grab my little, my little towel. My little, let me squeeze the water. To clean that egg mixture off there. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna beat that up real good, okay? Just whisk it up. I'm gonna put about a fourth of a cup of sugar because you know, I mean, a lot of the recipes call for a lot more than that. But by the time you put your your maple syrup on top, you've got it too sweet. So about a fourth a cup of sugar, and then I'm going to put about a cup and a half, and I might have to add some more because I'm working on this recipe. A cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. That's a cup and a half. Let me grab this. So far, we've gotten five eggs, a fourth of a cup of sugar, and we've gotten a um, cup and a half of heavy whipping cream. I'm going to put in some of my homemade, you know I'd have to move around tonight instead of standing still, but this knee, <laughs> there we go, I'm going to take that and pop the lid up there, I'm going to put one and a half tablespoons, a little bit closer to two tablespoons is what that was because I like that vanilla flavor. Mix that up. And you know, like in the, um, in the, Next to Christmas, like I said, I'll probably use eggnog next time that I make this instead of heavy whipping cream. I might split that or I might just use all eggnog. Makes a great little, put my lid back on there. I don't like the air to get to my sugar. Okay, now I've got uh, a really, you know, I showed y'all, it's about a half a loaf of this half a loaf, so I'm going to take that, make sure I've got everything in there. I've got my heavy whipping cream, I've got some eggs, I've got some vanilla, and I've got some sugar. Now I'm going to take all these, and I'm going to coat them, and I have cut down this recipe, so I'm trying to half it. I don't go up, I don't double it for a full loaf, but I go up a little bit more on everything. Okay. I'm just going to take a spoon and I'm going to coat all of these. Flip them over, let them get good and coated. Right. I did exactly what I'm supposed to do. I've got my card ahead of my horse, you know. <laughs> you don't want 
you will um, it to be soggy. You know what I'm saying? You don't want things to be soggy. So whenever I transfer these out of this pot, this pan, into a baking dish, I'll make sure that I get rid of any excess uh, juices or whatever, you know, of the egg mixture and the heavy whipping cream mixture. Okay, I'm going to cover this up with a piece of foil because uh -oh, plastic will not stick to my metal bowl. And I'm going to set this in the refrigerator overnight. And tomorrow morning we'll get up and make the coffee that goes on it and we'll bake it. Okay, this can take a little bit longer. Let's get this in the fridge. We'll see you back tomorrow. Okay, let's get the the topping put together. I got a half a cup of packed brown sugar. I'm gonna put um, one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon. going to put a half a, let me clean that off around there, a half of a cup of all-purpose flour. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. Put that over here. You see my sink full of washed up dishes over here. <laughs> I'm going to put a dash of salt pinch of salt, and then I'm going to put um, a half a cup of cold butter. This is a little bit warm, this one. Half of that half is. I'm using what I got. A half of a cup which is a whole stick, okay? Okay, now I'm going to take my old, uh, my old cutter here and I'm gonna cut that, I hope you can see it, cut that butter into that until it's little pieces. This old one is a little loose, you know what I'm saying? Ooh. Then we're gonna put this into a Ziploc baggie and we're gonna put it into the, um, the refrigerator to chill too, along with the coated sourdough bread. You can see I've cut it up into little pieces. Now, that in there and clean my mess up. And I'm going to get up every little bit that I 
have shaken out. Okay, we're going to seal this up and we're going to put it in the refrigerator and let that let that get good and cold and in the morning we'll sprinkle this on top of our goodies and pop it in the oven. See you then. Okay, it's morning and I'm back and I'm getting ready to coat the inside of my dish. I don't want my goodies sticking to anything, do I? If you don't know what this is, this is my pan coating that I did. If you'll go over to my page, watch the video on how to make it. It's pan, Baker's Pan Coating. Okay. Love this stuff. Can't live without it. Okay. Now, I've got my my bread all here and I am going to make sure I've got so many if you can tell I've been cooking I've got a sink behind me full of uh, everything in the world I think this was just enough okay I think that's going to be enough and it's soaked up let me put that right there it's soaked up everything Sometimes I'm going to put this in my dish. A lot of times you will find that there'll be a lot of this left over in the bottom. And if you've got a bunch of leftovers in the bottom, I don't put that in there because we don't want this to be soggy. We want this to be really yummy. Really yummy. Now, I'm going to grab my little crumbles that I want to put on top, okay? I've kept them in the refrigerator overnight. Like I said, you can look behind me and tell this morning, let me grab my cup of water. Uh, it, I've just been doing dishes and everything in the world. I'm going to take my crumbles and I'm going to put them all over my dish. And smell that good cinnamon. And you know, we're going to use some, um, uh, for, not fresh, but uh, real maple syrup on there. Well, I want you all to remember that I do this with, uh, instead of using the heavy whipping cream or the milk or whatever. I do this. I think that's enough for the crumbles. I love this cinnamon part. <laughs> I love the cinnamon part. Putting a little bit of butter or here and there and yonder. But remember, I use sometimes next to Christmas uh, for Christmas. This is a pre-Christmas thing right here. But a lot of times I will um, use eggnog instead of the heavy whipping cream or milk or whatever, okay? So, I'm getting ready to pop this. I'm waiting on my oven to sing. It's up to 315 right now. I wanna put it on 350, and I'm gonna be watching it from about 45 minutes on through an hour. So, I will let y'all know exactly how long I leave it in there. And I'm going to do it uncovered. Okay, we're back. Let me straighten up the camera. Uh, I'm going to put just a little bit of powdered sugar. Couldn't find my little sifter, so I had to get out my old antique one. Uh, put a little bit of brown sugar. You can do some cinnamon sugar on here, too. Some cinnamon in your powdered sugar. Okay. Don't it look delicious? I'm going to get a quick picture. Okay. Now I'm going to grab me a spoon and get me something out, okay? Ooh, this is going to be so good. 
look at that. Mm, 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 mm. On my plate. Then I'm going to scoop this down a little bit because it's pretty hot. Pretty hot. I'll scoop that down to there. Then I'm going to show you my beautiful, my beautiful plate and my yummy. I just call it uh, my version of French toast. Christmas French toast is normally what I put it. I've got some uh, Maple Hill Farm Pure New York maple syrup here. And I'm going to put just a little bit. I wish y'all could smell. I wish you had smell-o-vision. My, ooh, yummy. My um, house smells like Christmas. The cinnamon, and you know, I don't drink milk, but during this, when I have this breakfast, I always drink a little bit of milk. It's good for you. My husband is the milk drinker. Uh, I never pay any attention. I just cook with it. But, oh, yummy. That looks so good. Have me a nice big bite. I don't want to get my tongue burn off. I found the cutest little glasses. At every, I call it everything's a dollar. Y'all call it the Dollar Tree. Mmm. I wish y'all were here with me. I'd serve you up a big piece of this. And we would share together. It's so good. And it's good, really, warmed over. I like it the next day. Just a piece popped in the microwave on a few seconds. But if you get a chance, try it with eggnog instead of the cream or the milk. Mm-mm-mm. Mm. -mm -mm. mm. I baked it a full hour because you want to make sure that you don't get to the center of this and have sogginess, okay? If you want to add some eggnog, I mean, not some eggnog, you can, like I said just a minute ago, you can use eggnog, but if you want to use some nutmeg, mmm. It's really good. I hope y'all make yourself some. I hope that maybe you can have a beautiful Christmas and and serve your family up something on Christmas morning. It's such a great alternative to the regular breakfast food that we have. We always do ours on Christmas Eve and we cook it on the old wood cook stove. And we always have gravy and biscuits and all kinds of meats. Everybody brings a little something and we cook it while everybody is here. And it's just a family tradition that we love each year. And this is always going to be the day after on Christmas morning. My family comes back real quick and eats a lot of leftovers and stuff from the night before. And I'll make a pan of biscuits or do something extra, you know, for them. And this will be on the table this year for all of them to have. And um, I just want to tell y'all how much I love y'all. And I want to tell you how much the Lord loves you. Don't forget, Jesus is the reason for this season. Uh, sometimes it gets so commercialized that people just get to thinking in their minds, you know, I've got to buy this, I've got to buy that. You know what? I don't even have a topper on the top of my tree. I know y'all may think I'm awful, but there's more important things in life than worrying yourself to death about putting up the tree and is this decoration right? I used to be like that. 
I'll be the first one to tell you, there wasn't an inch in this house or outside this house that was not decorated. But it's just different. When you get a little older, you, uh, you realize that things that you thought were so important and had to be done, and you got in a tizzy over, you know, just got all tore up because things wasn't done, it don't mean a hill of beans. The main thing is that Jesus came as a baby in that little lowly manger. I got to thinking about Mary this week. <laughs> and I thought, well, okay. I loved, I'd thought about singing that song for you all. If I could find my soundtrack, Mary, did you know? That's my favorite. And when I, most of the time when I sing it, I can't hardly make it through it. When it says that when she touched his face, she, she touched the face of God. You know, um, I just love that this season. Y'all help me pray that if the Lord's, if it's the Lord's will, I, I'll find that soundtrack here at my home. Because I used to sing it all the time at our church. And, and uh, just... Just pray for me that if it's meant to be, God will let it be. I'm no big fine singer. Believe me, I'm just a regular woman that loves the Lord. Just no farm woman. Well, I'm going to stop rattling. I love you all, and I will see you next time, Lord willing. Okay? Don't ever forget how much the Lord loves you. Okay?